I'd like to talk with you about analytical hierarchy process this afternoon and show you how we can use that to determine which criteria in our designs are most important and then how to use that information, which criteria are most important, to help us select which design amongst alternative designs is our best design. So again, this is called an analytical hierarchy process. The nice thing about this uh, AHP, as it's called, is that it's based in theory, decision theory. And it's proven pretty effective in a number of different cases, buying houses, buying uh, cars, even choosing uh, candidates for positions and, and things such as that. So you'll benefit in that way just learning the process itself, but it'll help you determine which criteria are most important to your design. Secondly, once we've determined the importance of those criteria, we can move forward by choosing the best design among possible multiple designs that we have. So we'll use AHP uh, in an example problem so you can see how this works to get our best criteria and then use that information to select a good design. We're going to use a sample problem that consists of six uh, criteria that customers for a particular product have said are important to them. And those six criteria are going to be material cost, manufacturing cost, repairability, uh, durability, reliability, and time to produce. So those six criteria are the ones that we're looking at and right now what we're going to try to do is determine which of those is the most important criteria to our design. So we're going to set up a matrix and this matrix will consist of n by n entries or elements where n is the number of criteria. So in this example we're going to have a 6 by 6 matrix. And so we'll set the 6 by 6 matrix up and you'll notice that the number 1 appears along the diagonal of this 6 by 6 matrix. And that's simply because we're going to be doing these pairwise comparisons and if I'm comparing material cost to material cost I'm going to want to put a 1 in there because that would be an equal rating. There is no difference between material cost and material cost. There's not a relative ranking there. So uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go through these criteria row by row and compare, say, material cost to manufacturing cost and assign a ranking uh, to those in terms of which one is more important, appears to be most important, and so forth. Well, the ranking system we're going to be uh, using follows. Uh, one means that criteria A is equally important to criteria B. There's no difference in the two criteria. A three ranking means that criteria A is moderately more important than criteria B. A five means that A is thought to be strongly more important than B, criteria B. A seven means that A is uh, thought to be very strongly more important or even we have evidence to suggest that it's uh, strongly more important than criteria B. And the 9 means that there's no question about it, criteria A is more important than criteria B. We've shown that empirically or through surveys or something uh, of that nature. So 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. And you can use the even numbers if there's some threshold that you're not sure about. If you're trying to decide whether it's a 1 or a 3, you can compromise and choose uh, a 2. So that's the ranking we're going to use. And so we've got our n by n matrix and identified the criteria and again we're going to compare each one of these one pair at a time and give them a ranking based on which of the criteria we think is the more important. So there's our uh, CTQs, our rankings, and here's an example of where the, the matrix has actually been filled out so let's go through and see how this is actually done. So What's in this first column right here, it's actually not a column of a matrix, but it's to help us keep track of what's criteria A. And so criteria A in this first row is material cost. Well, when I compare A to A, there is no difference, so that's why the 1 is on the diagonal there. In comparing material cost to manufacturing cost for this particular design, it looks like manufacturing cost is ranked a 3. In other words, manufacturing cost is more important, moderately more important, that's where the 3 is coming from, than the material cost. And the reason I know that is that it's a fractional number and it's 1 over 3. If I look right below that, I see manufacturing cost, when compared to material cost, is moderately more important. And in comparing material cost to repairability, 
it's 1 over 5, repairability is strongly more important than material cost. And if I look at comparing repairability to manufacturing cost, where repairability is now A and material cost is criteria B, I see that repairability is strongly more important than material cost. So we continue to do that throughout the matrix. And comparing material cost to durability, uh, I see that durability is a 9 compared to material cost. If I look at durability as being A and material cost as being uh, B, there's no question that durability is more important, so we give it a 9. That means that material cost compared to durability is 1 over 9. And we go through the matrix and fill it out um, in much the same way. So where I have a comparison, say, of manufacturing to um, uh, material cost, then material cost to manufacturing will be the reciprocal of that. And that's why I've shown these terms like this. So I have 1 over 3 and 3, 1 over 5 and 5, 1 over 9 and 9. So we'll continue to fill the matrix out in that manner. And these uh, boxes are just telling us uh, what, we're, what we're seeing here. So I've completed the matrix, and this is called the criteria comparison matrix. We've compared, done a pairwise comparison of each one of our uh, criteria that our customers have said are, is important to us. So now I'm actually doing some numerical work here. I've put it, this into a spreadsheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum up these rankings in every column. So if I sum all the numbers under material cost column, I get 25.333. If I sum up all the columns under manufacturing cost, I get 14.667 and so forth. So all I'm doing here is summing uh, the columns. Once I have the columns summed, I'm going to take our criteria uh, comparison matrix and I'm going to normalize it. Well, what does that mean? What it means is I'm going to take each element and divide it by the sum of the co that particular column. So, for example, in material cost, you'll recall that we came up with 25.333. So I'm taking the first element of C, which was 1, and dividing that by 25.33, and that gives me 0 0.039. And we would continue to do that all the way through this matrix. So I'm taking the original matrix and dividing uh, the numbers in each column by the sum of each column so that we'll get this normalized matrix. Okay? So now uh, all of the columns should add up to be, to be 1. After I've normalized the matrix, the very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to average the rows. So I take the normalized matrix and I average these rows. So in this case I would have 0.039 plus 0 0.023 and so forth divided by 6 and that would be my criteria weights, the W vector, that's what we're calling that. Now we're going to use this information a little later on and this is really what we're after up to this point. We're trying to determine based on this HP process which of these criteria uh, appears to be controlling our design more so than the others. And it's looking like durability uh, with a, a weighting of 0 0.445 is the most important criteria. Okay, we're not quite through. We want to make sure that our rankings were consistent. And what does that mean? It means that we don't want to go through this process of assigning these weights without putting in some pretty good thought. And there's some numerical measures that will tell us how likely it was that some of these rankings were done randomly, that they weren't, there wasn't much thought to them. And we can calculate a consistency index that will tell us that. And if the consistency index, which is just a numerical measure of this, this, the consistency in how we did our rankings, is below a certain value, then we know our rankings were consistent. If it's above a certain value, then we need to go back and put more thought into the rankings. So, although it appears that durability is our most heavily weighted criteria, we still need to do the consistency check. So let's do that, let's do that next. Well, what I'm going to do is go back to my original C matrix, not the one that was normalized, but the one that um, contained the original set of pairwise uh, comparisons. And I'm going to multiply that by that W vector that we just calculated, 
which was the average of the rows of the normalized matrix. Okay? And that's going to give me this new vector, this W sub S vector. Once I get that, that W sub S vector, which is the matrix multiplication of C and W, I'm going to take the dot product of WS, which I just calculated, and dot it with 1 over W. You can't really divide a vector by a vector. Um, so we end up doing the dot product when we're trying to divide a vector by a vector. Uh, and that's going to come up with what's called the consistency vector. We'll average that vector, uh, get a lambda value, and we'll use that to calculate this consistency index. Lambda minus n over n minus 1, where n is their number of criteria. And I'm going to stop there, let some of this sink in, let you think about how you would go through that calculation, and then in the next brief video, we'll go through this calculation for the consistency ratio to see if our rankings were consistent.